This is a Commodore C64. Not my first computer, my first computer was an Amiga, but the reason why I'm showing you a Commodore C64 in a quantum computer video is relevant. In 2018, I took it upon myself to learn how to program this bad boy. Now, not program in basic, no, 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 I was a little bit more mad than that. I decided to program in assembly language. I hadn't had much programming experience up to that point and I really didn't know what I was letting myself in for, but a year later, 2019, and I'd managed to do probably about six or seven pages of code and I managed to get a little bit of a game going with assembly language. I kind of cracked it, but not quite cracked it. And like anything, I'm still learning this machine. But what's the relevance? Well, this machine, this beautiful bread bin, it's gorgeous. Look at it, it's absolutely lovely. When you code on the Commodore C64 in assembly language, you are effectively moving bits around the computer. When you code on a quantum computer, you are effectively moving qubits around the quantum base system. The two things in my mind are relevant, and I quite like the fact that this is a retro machine and the quantum computer is very much a futuristic machine. Now I've looked, I'll just put this down. I have looked everywhere for an Hello World program that resembles the Hello World programs of classic computers like the Commodore C64 where you would literally type in print hello world, you'd hit enter, and then you would see hello world on the screen. Quantum computers don't work like that. They work with quantum circuits and different things like that. But I thought, well, there are a few aspects to quantum computing that we could investigate today in this video and see if we could actually merge and generate hello world onto our screen using some elements of quantum computing. So. Join me on this journey. Let's do this together. This isn't really a um, in-depth what is quantum computing video. This is more of a let's actually program a quantum computer and learn how to do it kind of video. So if you're up for that, stick around. So oh. this is a complete idiot's guide to quantum computing then, hmm? <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not a complete idiot's guide. How did you get there, Wilfred, by the way? You know me. The mycelium network in your dimension is the root into mine, a dark manta-faced wormhole between two dimensional realities. It means I can travel anywhere and do anything I choose. So, for today, I've chosen to sit on top of your GameCube. Okay, so, join me on this journey. Let's see if we can do it. It's... A big, big, big attempt, and um, yeah, let's see how it goes, shall we? All right, cool. So, strap in. Quantum computing, creating an hello world program that mimics classical computers. Are you ready? Let's begin. All right, are you ready to do some coding? Here we go. So looking at the options available to us in a quantum computer, we can investigate these three really interesting aspects of quantum computing. They are quantum superpositioning. So we've got quantum superpositioning. We have quantum entanglement. And we have quantum tunneling. Now, these three aspects of quantum mechanics are fascinating. If you've watched any of my previous videos, um, I'll put a link to, let me just make sure I get that arrow, that point right, I'll put a link up there, look, there, 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 where the hell, there. The corner, that way. Yeah, there we go, that way. That corner right there of the video will have a link to the playlist of my Existential Awakening videos, which I think are, are really interesting to follow up until this point because it talks about my interest in quantum mechanics and how my interest in reality and all this sort of stuff. And it's kind of taken me to this point where we're now gonna, we're gonna look at this phenomena and how these particular phenomena actually operate inside a quantum-based system. 
My interest is in superpositioning, entanglement, and tunneling. Now, superpositioning is where you send a, a qubit into, it's, it's in a state of constant flux until it's measured, which means in a quantum computer, it can be a zero and a one at the same time. Entanglement is when the two qubits are connected to one another and they're always doing the same thing. So if you separate them out, really good for communications this could potentially be, you would have a, a quantum entanglement would be over here and a quantum entanglement would be over there. Maybe that's why we can't hear aliens when we listen to the stars because they're not actually using radio, they're using quantum entanglement to communicate with each other. It would make sense because that would be instantaneous communication. So that's something that we could look at today. Quantum tunneling is where you have qubits that can pass through certain things. Now, I don't understand quantum tunneling as much as the other two. I don't necessarily understand the other two either to a certain degree. But what I do know about, about um, quantum tunneling is that a, a quantum particle, a particle can pass through barriers that would other, otherwise seem impossible to penetrate. So... I think tunneling can be seen when um, certain particles can literally go through stars and go through planets, um, that kind of stuff. On a quantum computer, I don't know how that would work or how that would be relevant. I guess creating some sort of circuit where it would be able to go through certain parts of the circuit and stuff would make sense. I don't know. I've only really studied the quantum superpositioning and the entanglement aspect so far. So we're going to delete today quantum tunneling because I'm not going to be able to show you a good demonstration of that which leaves us just with superpositioning and entanglement. Now, I think for our Hello World program, which I would like to print to the screen in a standardized way, so something the user can can um, can basically interact with and then it then it goes into the quantum realm and comes back with results and we display them on the screen. I've written kind of a little detail here down down just underneath these these messages here. So I've got um so I want the program to request something from the user. I want it to go into the quantum realm and do something. Then I want to capture those results and then I want to display them on the screen. So, and I want it to be hello world. So what could that be? Hello, hello world. What could that potentially be? We want to print hello world, right? To the user's screen. Maybe what we could do is connect the positions of the letters to individual um, bits that are either a one or a zero um, and those bits are connected to qubits that generate random results of one or zero then we can connect that to the binary or well, back to the binary and that would give us a truly random a truly random state so we could we could print progressively through the program we could print like say we go you press enter or something and you get like this and then you press enter again and you get this then you press enter again and you get this like this something like that so every time we're pressing enter every time the user is pressing enter the request is going into the quantum realm, it's making a qubit go into superposition. We're measuring the qubit, and whatever that result is in a binary state will determine what character we print on screen every time the user presses enter. That sounds good to me, and that would be that would be a form of genuine random positioning. Now, the interesting thing here, actually, this is really interesting because on classic computers like the C64 and the Amiga and um, even, even classic computers like Pentium-based, AMD-based computers, um, they're not random. You can you can create like generate random number, but that's not random. What it does, certainly in the Commodore C64, I've done it with assembly language, it, we've connected to like the ra the raster line ticker or something that's counting the raster lines or whatever it is to then generate a random number for you on screen or in a calculation that's not actually random it's 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 a counter so if you were to do run that process on a on a um 
on a, a repetitive level at the same at the same rate, you're likely to generate the same number because it's not actually random. It's just using a counter. So um, they call it pseudo random. Um, so this is genuine random, which is why it's so good for cryptography. I think. Um, yeah. This could be our program. I think I think we're onto something here. I think this will be it. So every time you hit enter, we go into a quantum realm and it selects a character. It, com it comes out, whatever the situation is, it produces that character on screen every time we do it. Okay, sweet. That's a cool idea, I think. I think we're onto something there. Um, great. Let's, let's hold on to that. Yeah, let's hold on to that and let's go through the process now of installing Python. And then while we're doing that, we can learn a little bit about quantum computing. So I'm just going to quickly go through the process of installing Python now. So in, to install Python onto your computer, all you need to do is go to python.org. And from python.org, we head on down to the, da the download section. You click on Python 1.12, the latest release. Go and find your installer. For me, it's Windows, so I install Windows 64-bit. Select the area that I want to install. Yep, I want to uh, stick the download into downloads, obviously. Open it up. Install Python. Now, this is really important. You see here where it says add python.exe to path. If you run on Windows or if you run on Mac, you want to have Python to be able to be launched from your command prompt or your terminal, respectively. So click this box. Super important that you do because you can then launch Python natively from command prompts and terminals. Install now and away we go. While that's happening I'm just going to have a little bit of coffee. So let that install. That installs lovely jubbly. <laughs> okay cool 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 cool. Now while that's installing we're going to go and have a little look and learn about about quantum computing. Now, here are the videos on the Hello World programs on quantum computers that I found on YouTube. Now, this is the one that was done by the, Kiz the KizKit team at IBM. I found these videos to be particularly boring. They don't actually do any printing of Hello World onto screen. They're doing their version of Hello World by, by measuring qubits, basically, and creating very simple quantum circuits. Okay, that's great if you're a quantum mechanics engineer or you're a quantum computer engineer and you want to learn how quantum computers work from that perspective. But I want to demonstrate superpositioning and, and actually have a, a homage back to the classic computers and the classic Hello World program. So that's what I'm doing here. Now, this doesn't exist anywhere on the Internet. So this is kind of cool. And I think this is going to work. Um, but you can go check these videos out. Definitely go and watch them. Definitely, definitely watch them. You can also go, let's go to the quantum, the IBM quantum network. So this is the IBM quantum platform. Really great resources online for you to be able to learn stuff. Get yourself clued up in the wonderful world of quantum computing. Um, now let's go through. I think we've got Python installed now. I think we're good. Let's check it out. Let's see. Yay! Setup was successful. Hooray! Okay, cool. Now what we want to do is install the Kizkit module. So open up a command prompt and type into the command prompt pip install Kizkit. Now you also want to install the Kizkit Air module. So that's pip install Kizkit dash AER. So now that we've installed the Kizkit module and the Air Simulator module for Kizkit, we can now look at choosing our IDE of choice. Now, I like Notepad++ because I think it's very, very sexy. It's not actually an IDE, it's just effectively a Notepad, but it has plugins that enable you to launch Python directly from Notepad++. I like that. There are other choices available. If you go to IBM, they tell you to use Jupyter, which is a really good web-based IDE. You can also use um, PyCharm as well. There are a few, uh, is it PyCharm or PyCharm? I think it's PyCharm. There are a whole bunch of other ones you can have a little look at. Google is your friend when it comes to searching for IDEs. But personally, I love Notepad++. I love the look of it. it makes me feel like a real hacker when I'm coding on it. It's that kind of jazz, right? And now it's time to begin our code. So we'll just do all of this. I'll keep that on there. Okay, so we'll just select all of this and we'll block comment it. 
There we go. And then we will start our program. Now, it's a warning to you basically about Kizkit because the module is in constant development. So what might work today will probably be changed later. So if you encounter problems, especially if you're watching this video in the future, hello future people, whoa. If you're watching this in the future, and you encounter problems, you might want to check IBM's documentation or the Stack Exchange for community assistance. Now they're available at quantumcomputing.stackexchange.com. Also check out the Kizkit SDK, which is a software development kit here, which is the um, docs. I'll put it. I'll put a put a little thing here on the in the bottom of the screen. So it's docs.quantum.ibm.com forward slash API forward slash Kizkit. Okay, cool. Now that we've got the Kizkit module and we've got the Air module installed, we now want to install on the code our actual sub-modules from Kizkit that we're going to be using today. And those are going to be Transpile, Assemble, the Quantum Circuit, and we want to import Air directly from the Kizkit-Air. So let's start things off. So from Kizkit, from Kizkit we want to import Transpile, import, import, trans. So the transpile submodule is responsible for converting a given quantum circuit into an equivalent circuit that is suitable for a specific quantum backend. It's a particular type of quantum computer, basically. Super, super, super duper, super duper interesting. Now we want to go to from Kizkit import assemble. Now, assemble is a submodule that's involved in compiling quantum circuits into a format that can be executed on a quantum backend. Okay, this really helps us to set up our quantum environment. Now, from Kizkit, we also want to import our quantum circuit. I can't spell today. Quantum circuit. Make sure I've spelled that correctly. Q U A N T U M Q U A N T U M circuit. There we go. Quantum circuit. I'm dyslexic, so do bear with me. I can't spell anything. Okay, sweet. So we've got that done. Now we're going to move on to um, we've got to import air. Yes, we've got to import. So from Kizkit dash air, we want to import. Oops, we want to import air. Yeah, we want to input air because air is the simulator which offers various different simulators and allows us to simulate the behavior of quantum circuits on our normal computers. Okay, so on our normal Windows machines and Macs and Linux machines, that kind of thing. Now, I think that's basically it for our importing done. That's all okay. Um, I'm going to make a little bit more space on this screen a second just so we've got more space here. So we've got more space here on the screen. Um, set that up and I think we should now start with the message. So we'll do message equals hello world. Hello world. Be funny if it was a question mark. Hello world. Now that defines the message and the current state of the display. We can put down here um, uh, display. So we want to do like, um, I think we probably want to do like underscores, something like that. Mm. Good coffee. Okay, so displayed. Displayed equals. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, 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 that. Um, and then I guess get the length of the message. So length of the message. Let me just see how long that is. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay, thirteen. Length of the message is thirteen. That's cool. All right, sweet. So the purpose of this line is to basically initialize the displayed list with underscores. So they represent the hidden characters that will be revealed one by one as the program progresses. Len basically calculates the length of the variable, which here in the string is labeled message. And then that um, that kind of underscore thing is like part of where it goes. And that will help us to see on the screen where there are aspects of characters left to be dropped, basically. 
So now the next section is to create a function to simulate picking a random index using the quantum computer. So uh, let's go def, we want to define get uh, random, random index. There we go. Um, get into this. So we want to set up a quantum circuit with enough qubits to cover all of the indices in the message. So we've got, what did I say, 13 characters in hello world. So what's two to the power of four? That's 16. So that would be, we would need, um, 16 is greater than 13. So that's probably, that's probably fine. So let's just, let's just keep it at that. So that would be the, yeah, that was, that should cover it. So where we're going to go from here, what do we do next? We're going to go circuit, I think circuit equals, and then we're going back to quantum circuit. So quantum circuit, yep, there she is. Quantum circuit, and then these are the qubits, and then these are the classical bits, okay? Um, so that's four qubits on the left number, four qubits on the right number. Do I need to put a comma in there? I don't think I do, that's good. Yeah, that's fine. That's the thing, so, so just as a reminder, what the qubits actually are. In quantum computing, qubits, okay, are the basic units of quantum information, and they represent both a zero and a one simultaneously. It's so gnarly. And due to the principle of superpositioning, they can, they literally go Okay, so in this line, so in this line, quantum circuit 4-4, four, four, um, it creates a quantum circuit with four qubits, meaning that the circuit can manipulate and process quantum information using these qubits. So cool. Now the classical bits, they're the basic units of classical information in classical, commuting, uh, in classical computing. And they can represent either a zero or a one, similar to traditional binary bits. Now the second parameter four in the quantum circuit four specifies that the, the circuit also has these four classical bits. And these classical bits can be used for, for computation or to store the results of measurements performed on the qubits. So we're gonna, they're gonna help, basically the qubits will go Give us, give us some kind of crazy result, and then we then attribute that to the classical bit to allow to allow our um, our classical program to 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 kind of communicate with the qubits. Okay. Um, now we're going to do the range. Yes, we'll do the range. That's the next section. Okay. So we'll come down here, do the range. So circuit 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 dot h. Uh, range, um, I think it's going to be four, isn't it? Four, and then yeah, that's that creates our Hadamard gate. That creates our Hadamard gate to basically put every qubit into superposition. So the had basically that circuit dot h is the code for creating a gate that sends our qubits into superposition. So they go through the gate effectively if you can imagine that and they become super super positioned so imagine each of our qubits is a pokemon coin okay a cute little pokemon coin like this so if we got four pokemon coins going through a hadamard gate i, I keep I hope i hope I, i'm saying that right hadamard gate hadamard gate yeah when they go through a hadamard gate they become superimposed so effectively what happens is they go through the gate and they go bing like that and we catch it and we see what it is. So right now it's on tails, right? So we grab it, we go tails, and then we talk to the classical bit and we go, you are now a one, you are now a zero based on what we've what we've captured there. That capturing is the is the next line that we're gonna code, which is the measurement line. Okay, so we come down here and we do the measurement line now, which is the so the measurement is circuit.measurement. So C E R C U I T circuit dot measure and then we do the range again so it's the range and we go for whoops that's outside of it for um for range four again to cover the other side yep and that will measure all of the qubits to collapse their superposition state basically so yeah that that literally that literally collapses the qubits so they can be measured to be either a zero or a one. Okay, now we execute the quantum circuit onto a simulator. So that, yep, that's everything. We've gone through the gate. We, so we sent the coin spinning, we've grabbed the coin, we're, we're now looking at it. And now what we wanna do is then, is then 
pump it into the simulator so we can figure out what the hell's happened and then and then we can then translate that back to the user so simulator equals air dot get underscore backend and then go in here and do I think it's quasm quasm underscore sim underscore sim you later underscore simulator close bracket and yeah that's the simulator now we want to go result we want to look at the result don't we so result equals sim you later dot run and then we'll put the circuit in there and then we'll add the shots so that's going to be shots five okay five shots through and then dot result and then that okay okay cool so that's how we get our result and then we want to convert the binary result to a decimal index right so how are we going to do that so we want to we want to return the the value um, of the maximum counts I guess with the key result uh, and the len message yeah and the length of the message in there as well so let's just let's just this is going to be a bit of a long bit of code but let's let's type this out and see how it goes so um, uh, we want to return okay we want to return int max um, result dot get underscore counts open and close brackets and then key equals result dot get underscore counts open and close bracket dot get there there uh, yeah two and then um, go into len right so then this and then len message yeah I think that's right I think that's that's gonna do what we need it to do so that will convert the binary result to a decimal index and ensure it is a valid index for our message. So let's let's look at it along there. So let's just make this because it's a bit bit of a big line of code here. So let's just get that up nice and sexy on the screen. Look at that. Love Notepad Plus Plus. It's so attractive. Right, okay. Makes you feel like you're hacking in a cyberpunk dystopian universe. The Sevitas universe. Right, okay, so return, we've done that. Now, now what do we want to do? We want to um, I think we want to go, let me just review this. So, okay, message there, then, yep, 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 circuit, quantum circuit, H range, four, match it, yep, cool, 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 cool. Okay, probably, mm. we probably want to go into our main loop now, don't we? So let's do that. All right, sweet boom ting. So let's go. Main loop the loop, as my little boy would say. Let's make the loop the loops, Daddy. Let's make the loop the loops. He absolutely loves his Hot Wheels. Right, okay, cool. So main loop, and then we're gonna go to, um, we're gonna go to creating the printing on the screen, right? So we wanna go print, print um, this, yep, dot join displayed. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And then we'll go into a while loop. Um, and then we'll say that while we've got the um, the, li the underscore lines displayed, we want to print um, the input of pressing enter. Um, and then we want to go to the random index and get the random index based on the quantum superposition to then reveal the, 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 the character on screen. Then we want to do... Then we want to check if a character is already revealed um, and then not reveal it and reveal another one. So we'll do another while loop after that as well. Apologies if my code is, is a little bit um, messy. I've not, I've not had a chance to really, to really um, think about it whilst we're doing it like this on the fly, but um, let's, just see, let's just see how it goes. If you can come up with a, better, with a better code for this, if you can come up with better code for this, please leave it in the comments below. I would love to check it out and have a good look. So um, yeah, that's your challenge. Come up with a more efficient, more efficient code. If we, were, if it, if we get it working. Um, okay, so this, or even if I don't get it working, this, this, so while, while that 
is in displayed. Okay, so while we've got that line in displayed, um, we want to uh, input our text to the screen, right? So input. Um, now, what do we want to say? We want to say press enter, don't we? We want to tell the user to press enter um, to to reveal a character chosen at random at random using quantum super position ink. So sick. <laughs> so, so sick. All right, cool. Uh, should we do dot, dot, dot? Yeah, let's do dot, dot, dot. That might be too long for the command prompt, but we'll see. Who cares? We'll see how it goes. We can tweak it as we go along. So that's the input. Now we want to go IDX because we want to get the random index on there. So get underscore random underscore index. Uh, okay, cool. So that's that. what that does is it gets the random index based on the quantum superposition and measurement. So it brings that in together, okay? Now we want to do an if statement here. So we want, but, we'll, but it will be a while loop. So if we go, it's going to be in part, it will be part of this loop, won't it? Yeah, it's part of this loop. So while, yeah, we keep it inside here. So while uh, displayed, while displayed um, IDX, IDX does not equal our underscore then we chip across idx equals get random index yeah we go and get another random index from the quantum circuit basically so that's how that would work and then we want to reveal the character at the found index so we go to here yeah i think that's right have I ended that? Yeah, I have ended that correctly, haven't I? Yeah, let me just double check. That all looks okay. Yeah, that looks okay. So displayed. Displayed. Um, uh, reveal the character of the found index now, isn't it? Yeah, so displayed. IDX. Oops. Oop. IDX equals message. IDX. Okay, and then print the current state of the message, I guess. So we then go print. Yeah, that's right. It would be the join at the top there. So we would go print dot join displayed. Okay, I th think I think that's it. Let me just see if this is all okay before we start doing anything cray cray. Um, let's have a little look. Does it look okay? Does it look okay? All right, let's hope that when I installed Python it all worked all right and we've got it on the command prompt. If it doesn't work, then that's going to be annoying. Um, okay, cool. Let's see if we can get it up and running. So I, I will save it. God, I'm nervous. Why am I nervous? Why am I nervous? Okay, let's save it. Um, I think this looks good. I think this looks good. Let's save it. Okay, let's save it. Come on, James. you got to you got to you got to take the jump. When in doubt, kiss the girl. Okay, so here we go. Going to save it as hello world onto the desktop just to make life easy for everybody. All right. Okay, so here we go. I'm a little bit scared. I'm a little bit scared. Let's run this bad boy. Let's run the hello world program. Let's go. <laughs> Okay, yes, so we needed to put an underscore on that. So let's go in there now and put an underscore on there right now. There it is. Oh, that's why it was green. There we go. Save that up. Okay, cool. And now let's go again. Let's go run. Oh, we got another problem on line 14. So the circuit dot measure range brackets would never close. We need to close that range. Okay, cool. We'll close that now. We'll go do that right now. We'll close that round, go to the range. Duh, 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 duh. This is interesting. Go to line 14, line 14 circuit, that one there, that there. There we go. Add the extra, close the bracket. Okay, save. Okay, so then we run it. <gasps> Whoa! 
Let's see what happens now. Okay, here we go. You ready? Gonna press enter. Yes! There you go. Sweet, it freaking worked. Yeah! Super positioning. All right, let's try that again. Okay, so I'll turn this off. Oh my gosh, I'm so chuffed that that worked. Yes! All right, let's run that bad boy again. So remember, we had the second L of Hello World in there. Now let's see what happens now. Not the second L, it's the third L of Hello World in there. Let's run it again. Let's see what happens. Okay, here we go. There's the command prompt. We'll press enter. H this time. W. Yep, that looks pretty random to me. Yes, it works. Wicked. It absolutely works. This is so good. I'm so pleased. Yes. Excellent. Great. So there you have it. We managed to program an Hello World program using quantum superpositioning on a quantum computer simulator. I am chuffed. Great stuff. All right. Wicked. Well, oh. very good indeed, James. It appears that this could be just the tip of the iceberg of quantum computing. I wonder what the other profundians will come up with. Very impressive. Thanks, Wolf. Cheers. Well, thank you very much. You guys have been awesome. This is quantum computing in a nutshell. Um, I'll leave the code in the description below. Please have a play with it. Come up with your own quantum programs and tell me what you've discovered. It would be so cool for us to continue this conversation in the comments below. So, wicked. I'm James. This is my interdimensional buddy, Wilfred Talon. CEO of Talon Corp. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and post your comments, Profundiums. It is the only way the Eutubius Maximus Almighty Algorithm will ever find this channel. So your engagement is very much appreciated. Yes, exactly. SS to the mushy, and know that you are all awesome and rad. See you next time. I can't believe that worked. Yes! <laughs>